So I'm going to discuss about the complex types of data. What is complex types of data? When we are dealing with the uh, data mining, okay, we learn about the basic data like the tabular data, okay, the data in the table. But there might be some other kind of data. We have, we will have like the multi-dimensional data and how we can deal with the multi-dimensional analysis and how we can do the descriptive mining of complex data objects. And we can also have the spatial database. Okay, what is the spatial database? And then we will learn some about the multimedia database. So we will learn how to mine the spatial database and how to mine the multimedia database. <clears throat> First about the more the complex data objects. If you still remember, whenever we have the table, whenever we have table like this one, one object means one book. Maybe if this is a table of student. So one row means one student. Or if it is related to customer, then one row means one customer. And we can make the generalization of this structured data. How we can make this generalization? Yeah, we can set value attribute. What is set value attribute? It is the generalization of each value in the set into its corresponding higher level concept. Okay. The keyword is the generalization. Let's see. I have the column hobby. You know hobby. I can define the hobby as tennis, hockey, chess. And this kind of hobby is very specific. Meanwhile, we can make a general hobby. What is the general hobby? This is sports. So this is the general term of the tennis, hockey, and chess. Violin. Okay, it is about music. Maybe you can have another hobby like piano, guitar, drum. Then it is in the music. Or Nintendo games. Or maybe smartphone games. Yeah, you can put it as the games related hobby. So we call this one is the Z value attribute. We can make the derivation of the general behavior of the set such as the number of elements in the set. So for example, now sports. I have three elements. So sports, we have tennis, hockey, and chess. Or we can have the types or value ranges in the set. So the types or value ranges in the set, it means I have the, uh, for example, number in between one until 10. Or we can have the weighted average for numerical data. So there are many things that we can do with the generalization of structured data with the set value. So for example, now we have the hobby, which is tennis, hockey, chess, violin, then the games, and then it is generalized to spot, music, and video games. There's another way to mine the complex data. We can use the list value or sequence value attribute. It means, yeah, it is the same as the set value attribute, the same with this one, except that the order of the elements in the sequence 
should be observed in the generalization. For example, um, in the human activity, I would like to cook ramen. So, do you know how to cook ramen? It should be a sequence. Even though the sequence might not be like this, but at least we can boil the water and then put the noodle and then put the sauce and serve the noodle. So this is a sequence. And this sequence value resembles the higher level. This is the food level. So if we have this kind of complex data, yeah, we can make it this kind of structure. There is another kind of data, we call it spatial data. Spatial data, it is generalized the detailed geographic points. Geographic point means you know the latitude, longitude. So we can cluster the latitude and longitude into some regions. For example, I know that Gangnamgu is a business area. I know that the Mapogu is about the residential area. Maybe. And yeah, we can have the industrial area. Maybe yeah. in Suwon is the industrial area. Agricultural areas. So Yongin is the agricultural area. And yeah, we can make the generalization according to the land uses. Require the mix of a set of geographical areas by spatial operation. The spatial operation means, yeah, if you have like this one, this is the area of Seoul and Dongi. Then, yeah, you can make, maybe this is the specialized industry for IT, for electronic, for machinery, and etc. So this area is Jeju, it is for the tourism, for the agriculture. Yeah. So we can make also the spatial data into specific regions or area based on the region like this. We can also deal with the image data. It means we want to extract by aggregation and or approximation. For example, I can see the size, I can see the color, I can see the shape, texture, orientation, and the relative position and structures of the content objects or regions in the image. So for example, if I want to know the size of this orange, okay, the size of this orange is good enough, so maybe this orange is already ripe, so I can pick this orange. Because the size is okay, the color is yellow, the shape is already in a circle, the texture of this orange is good, so I can pick. That's why there is a kind of robot robot that can pick this kind of orange because they know that this is an orange that can be picked but this orange maybe is not ready because it is still in the green color then using this kind of image yeah we can figure out what can the machine learning do what is the data mining uh, doing with this size, color, shape, and so on. If you want to deal with the musical data, so you can summarize its melody. It is based on the approximate patterns that repeatedly occur in the segment. 
So in the melody, you know about the melody of the popular song, pop song. You can see the melody of the ballad song. You can see the melody of jazz or classical music. And you can also summarize based on the style. Based on the style, for example, based on the each tone, tempo, or the major musical instrument. So we know that musical instrument can be like the piano, and then the trumpet, or guitar, or drum. So yeah, it can be the combination of those. But with the data mining, we can split each of the sound. So that's the way of the generalization of the multimedia and the spatial data. Whenever we have those kind of real data, you need to consider the data warehouse. So we learned about the data warehouse in the first part before the mid exam. The data warehouse properties. So in this case, we are going to check the spatial data. And in the spatial data, we can also build the spatial data warehouse. As you know, the property is the integrated. It should be the combination between tables or many tables. It should be subject oriented. Yeah. Subject oriented means if it is related to the customer, then all the dimension or the tables should be related to the customers. Maybe the customer location, the customer information, the customer behavior, the customer transaction, and etc. So it should be the subject oriented. Time variant. So if the data is about five years, then you can put it into the data warehouse. But if the data is only three months or one month, maybe it is the transactional data. You don't need to put in the data warehouse. And so on, the non-volatile spatial data repository for the data analysis. So we learn all those properties in the data warehouse. When we want to integrate the data, there's a big issue. Whether your data is based on the spatial structure or not. So the structure specific formats, for example, we have raster versus vector. What is raster? Vector is this kind of data. So when you have a picture, you can make a grid. A grid means, yeah, if you have picture, you can make like box. So you can make some boxes like this one. Okay. And then for every box, it will be filled with the color. Let's say I want to put this green. Okay, this is, yeah, the green color means this is the plan. If I see this blue color, it is the river. So in this case, the green, yeah, it may be about the grass or the plant. And the blue, it is the river. So if you just use the line features or using the vector, you can see like this one, but if you use the raster line, it is more obvious because it is based on the cell. Or you can have another kind of model. For example, you want to use OO. OO means object oriented. So in the programming, we have the object oriented programming. In the database, we have object oriented database. So we can use this kind of object oriented for particular data, the spatial data. Or we can also apply the relational models. 
so the relation of models it is related with the rtm rttms rttms it is the relational tvms tvms means the database management system so it is different between the object oriented and the relational database management system or if you have different storage it's also different if you store the data in the cloud or if you store the data in your hard drive it's also different and there are some vendor specific format if you use the s3 for example let's see S3 is one vendor. Okay, so this is one vendor. They call it S3. It is the American based GIS software company. So they can map. And their mapping is based on some data structure, based on that company. Let's say if you want to check from another company, Map Info. So Map Info, they have another kind of system for this similar GIS. So the data structure will be different, but the goal is similar. So they have another way to indicate the spatial data. So you need to understand what is the data structure for this kind of data and in this specific company. So we call it this is using the raster data. And so on. And when we are dealing with this kind of data, we can also make the data cube. The data cube means yeah, we have the multi-dimensional spatial database. Usually, this kind of data cube at least contain three kind of dimensions. So both dimension and methods may contain spatial components. So you, you can have the spatial data with this data cube. So for example, if we are dealing with the data warehouse, if you check again in the data warehouse section, there might be two things in the data warehouse first is the dimension and the other is measures in the dimension modeling it means we can see from the non-spatial aspect non-spatial so it is not related with the spatial data for example i want to check the temperature it's not related with the spatial data but i want to know if 25 until 30 degrees it can be generalized to how so this is not spatial data another things we can transform from spatial to non-spatial for example uh, i'm not sure if you are familiar with this area this is one Area in Hanju, in Songna, in Jungbong. Okay. So this area is it can be generalized to the description West Hanju. So I think for the Korean, uh, yeah, you know, you have the Seo Hanju, Dong Hanju. But actually, it is not no official. So you have the Gyeongbu Gosukuru. So if the the left part is the west, the right part is the east. So so and to. They just make that kind of description, but it is not clearly described in the map. So we call this is the spatial to the non-spatial. Or if you want to make the spatial to spatial data, okay, so we can also define the dimension. For example, Gundang. Gundang is more popular than Gyeonggi. 
so we can make the special uh, like the generalization of the pundang into the Gyeonggi province. When we deal with masses, you know the masses contain of the numerical, and the numerical can be distinguished into three, like distributive, algebraic, and holistic. So you can look at those uh, terminology in the data of masses. And for the masses in the spatial, you can have the collection of spatial pointers. This is the spatial pointers here. For example, the pointers to all regions with 25 until 30 degrees in July. So, for example, let's see from the soul. So in Seoul, we can analyze the weather pattern. This is one of the paper that I took from this link. They used uh, 23 automatic weather stations, AWS, in the Seoul metropolitan area. And they have the daily data for the temperature, for the precipitation, and wind velocity, and etc. And they have the concept hierarchies for all entities. It means they have the specific regions and then they combine into like you know, some map. So the output is a map that reveal patterns. So they merge the similar regions. Maybe you know like Gangnam Gu here. Yeah. Or this one, maybe this is the Dongdaemun Gu. Yeah. So you can see there are birds. And if you look at this kind of color, okay, so you will see that this color represents the temperature. The more the red color, it shows the higher temperature. The lower temperature, it shows in the blue color. So in the spring, this area is having lower temperature. And this area is having higher temperature. Maybe more people live here. Maybe there are many people who yeah, live, who travel. There are many cars. Okay? But this area has less car and has less population. So that's why the temperature is low. So the goal is we can do interactive analysis. We can drill down, we can slice, we can dice, we can fiber, we can roll up based on this area. And yeah, using this kind of way, uh, it is a fast breath plus times because you map into one map like this one, and then you can just search what you want to look at in details or what you want to look at in the summary. And it can minimize the storage space use. So the challenge is, yeah, a merged region may contain hundreds of primitive regions or polygons. So for example, uh, in Gangnam Gu, in Gangnam Gu, maybe the region is like this one. And it is not in the square. So in Kamanamku, maybe another dome. And there will be another dome like this one. There is another dome. And it is in a polygon. So it is difficult to understand this one. But usually in the spatial data, we will use this kind of polygons. We call it the polygons. So when we use the star schema for the data warehouse, you can see this is the example of the star schema. We have the dimension, the region name. So the fact table is the solvator, but we can have the dimension table. The dimension table, the region name, it can be more detailed like the location or the probe location. The district, the city, the region, and the province. If it is about time, yeah, we can have 
टाइम डायमेंशन तो टाइम डे मंथ हो दिस इज टाइप ऑफ सीजन इफ इट इज रिलेटेड विद द टेंपरेचर सो वी कैन हैव द टेंपरेचर डायमेंशन टेंपरेचर द टेंपरेचर रेंज सो यू नो इन वन डे वी कैन हैव डिफरेंट टेंपरेचर टेंपरेचर इन द मॉर्निंग टेंपरेचर इन द नून सो इट्स डिफरेंट Usually, we can see in the daily basis. For example, the temperature is between two until eleven degrees Celsius. So we call this the range. Or we can have also the temperature description, whether it is cool or it is cold or it is extremely cold and such. We can also have the precipitation. So the precipitation. Yeah, what is the current value of the precipitation? What is the precipitation range? And what is the description of the precipitation? For example, you know, in the weather forecast, they always mention dry. Be careful of the fire because they already measure the precipitation. Or maybe they can say it is humid. So that's the precipitation description. We can also have the measurement in the data warehouse. We have the measurement. So, for example, the region map. Yeah, the region map is the map that we saw before, like the soil. And then, what is the area? So, how many area that you want to measure or you want to observe and count? Okay. So we can see later about the temperature. Or how many of uh, the area that contains of the temperature between two until eleven, and how many uh, district that have the precipitation between some values. Okay, that's about the spatial data. What about the multimedia data? As you learned before about the text data, we can also find the similarity of the text. So in the multimedia data, we also can find the similarity of the multimedia. We call it the description-based retrieval system. What is the meaning by retrieval system? So if you still remember in the text, okay, we have the retrieval, okay, the retrieve data, and the relevant data. Okay. This multimedia database, we can also have the same retrieve, or we call the retrieval system, because I can find what the pictures that I want to search in the database. For example, this figure is about tiger. How do we know that it is tiger? Because we learn this kind of animal, we call it tiger. That's why there are some jobs, we call it the data annotator. Okay, in some years ago, I think it is a very popular job, data annotation. Whenever they have picture, so we need to annotate or we need to give the description. If we know that this image is tiger, then we can just search tiger. And then all the tiger pictures will appear because of the description. Usually, the, we have the keywords. Or we have the caption. Nowadays, if you use your smartphone, you can see also the size of the picture. And also you can see the time of creation. So those kind of things, you can use the description-based retrieval system. And this kind of description-based is usually you know, labor-intensive because you need to 
uh, make the description manual. Even though the size and the time creation it is automatic, but the keywords it is manual. And the results are typically of poor quality if automatic. So if you want to make the automatic annotation, yeah, the result will be good. That's why it is a very popular job. I think until now, there are some companies who still did data annotator. Content-based retrieval system. So we want to check this on the content. The content of the image, or we call the image content. Spot retrieval is on the image content. What is the image content? Such as the color histogram. So we can see the first one. Okay, most of this bus has the red color. So if they are dominant in red, I can say, okay, this is a bus. Or if it is uh, dominant in blue, like this one, okay, it may be a bus. Texture. So texture is about the line or yeah, something related to the pattern. Maybe it's line like this one, or the vertical line, or the diagonal line, or maybe wave line, and etc. Shape. You know that this bus has the shape like a rectangle. Okay, this is also a rectangle. Rectangle. So if you can figure out this kind of shape, I can say that okay, this content uh, shows a bus. Objects. So as I mentioned to you, the data annotator or the data annotation yeah, is necessary to define what is the object. For example, here, okay, I know that this figure contain of aeroplane. Maybe yeah, this is an aeroplane, this is aeroplane, aeroplane, and aeroplane. So it contains object. And also we can use the wavelength transform. So we already learned this uh, mechanism. Usually when we use uh, we, when we use image, we use the color histogram. The color can be split into three: red, green, and blue. So that's why we call it the R. G and B. And this is the histogram. For example, this is a very popular picture. In this picture, the red color, so we have this one from 0 until 255. We have like this amount of red color. So here is the red color of a number. This green color, yeah, then this number is higher, the other is lower. What about the blue color? Okay, this blue color is higher. Then if we know that the skewness is more on the right, okay, then this color is might be the light color. So this is the content base, and we can usually adopt with the color histogram. <laughs> the other kind of uh, content based readable system, we can do query. So in the previous part, we would like to see some similarity. So the similarity can be uh, obtained by using this kind of uh, features. When you want to query, when you want to query, it means you want to search on a particular database, for example. So you can have the sample base, sample base query. It means you want to find all of the images that are similar to the given image sample. So, for example, I have 
this image. So people call this is the image of Lena. So I have this image and then I want to query this image. So when I want to query this image, I need to extract the features. So you already did on your uh, assignment, you did the feature extraction. After you have the feature extraction, so you have the query image features based on this query image. And then you can compare with the feature database. What is feature database? The feature database is from the image database. So there are many collections of images. And then we will extract the features from those images. And we put those features into the feature database. So compare the feature factor signature extracted from the sample with the feature factors of images that have already been extracted and indexed in the image database. So we want to compare between this one and this one. So we can use the similarity matching. The highest similar images will be the retrieved images because this is the sample case value because we have the sample but we can also do with the feature specification values what is feature specification queries so we want to create this image based on the features so we want to specify all the sketch image features like the color, texture, or shape. So we have yeah, this one, it shows before. We have the color red is more on the left. We have the color blue is also more on the left. We can also check the texture of this. Maybe we have the wood texture. Okay. We have the head texture. And we have the shape, okay? the shape, yeah, this is the rectangle shape, this head, this is the head shape, and etc. So we can translate this into the feature factor and we can match the feature factor with the feature factors of images in the database. So if it is sample base, we have the query image, but if it is feature specification, we have the feature specification and the feature specification will be going to the similarity matching to check with the feature database. We can have image signature. What is the image signature? If we have the color, we can make the color histogram based signature. The signature includes color histogram based on a color composition of the image, regardless of its scale or orientation. So we have the color histogram. You know histogram. Histogram is the distribution of the data. We can also make the color histogram. For example, this one. This is sunset sunset picture and based on this picture we know that there are many yellow okay maybe this is dark yellow this is black so the color of yellow you can see in the colored histogram is very high or it means there are many yellow of this yellow there are many orange and this is also dark yellow, okay. then I can say that if the color histogram is similar like this one, it can be the sunset image. There is no information about the shape, no information about location, no information about texture, just color histogram. However, the two images with similar color composition 
may contain very different shapes or textures and thus could be completely unrelated in the semantics. So maybe if you go to the orange uh, agriculture, if you go to orange farm, so you can see there are many orange and in that farm, you will see the histogram, the color histogram might be similar to the sunset. So it means the data of the color might be similar, but the semantic might be different or the meaning will be, can be different. We can also use the multi-feature. What is multi-feature? Multi-feature composed signature means the signature includes a composition of multiple features. So you can use not only the color histogram, but you need also to check the shape. You need to check also the location. You need to check the texture. For example, in the health domain, you want to know the tumor. So whenever you go to a hospital, they already have this kind of database. So if this one is the pathological image, then they will make some sample. Okay, this one. Okay, this is the sar sarcinoma. This one is a sarcinoma in situ. This kind of texture or this kind of location and this kind of color and this kind of text, uh, shape, it is dysplasia. If you can see this information, then it is normal. So it means it is not a thing. So there are some ways, you know, so you can make like this image and then you make the epithelium and etc. So you will extract the features based on the color, based on the texture, based on the morphology and the topology. And you can make the histogram of the color. So if it is more red, then yeah, it is related to the sarcinoma. If it is more yellow, it is for the CIS and so on. And you can plot okay, the wavelength for every of this category. So at the end, you can use this one for searching the similar image. That's why whenever you go to hospital, yeah. if they already have this kind of database, then they can look at the database whether you have a particular disease on. We can have the content-based image beautiful from digital libraries. So they call it CBER. Content-based image beautiful from digital libraries. So you can search your image based on the color. You can search based on the color percentage. You can search based on the color layout. You can search based on the texture density. You can search based on the layout. You can search based on the object model. You can check based on the illumination invariance, so dark or light. Or you can search all based on the keywords. So, for example, we have this dolphin. So, in this dolphin figure, we have the size is 640, the width is 640. And the head is 482. So the head is 482. It is using pixel. And if you want to make the color layout, you can downsize this one into, for example, 8 multiplied by 8. If it is 8 multiplied by 8, then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it is 8 cells. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have also another 8 cells. And the color here represents the dominant color. So in this section, okay, we have this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. So we can reduce 
from 640 into 8. And then we can see what is the dominant color blue. We can also reduce it to 4 multiplied by 4. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. And we can see that the dominant color here is the blue, black, and dark blue. And we can also reduce to color 2 multiplied by 2, or you can also reduce to color 1 multiplied by 1. And we can make the color histogram. The color histogram means, and you can see that, okay, there are many blue. The color percentage is the highest, this is 73%, and the black is 13%. Light blue is 30 percent, and the remaining is cyan is 0 0.0 0 0.01. You can look at also the texture. So this is the texture layout, 8 multiplied by 8. This is the texture layout, 4 multiplied by 4. This is the texture layout, 2 multiplied by 2, and this is the texture layout, 1 multiplied by 1. So you can make this one in the silver, and we can have this as the multi-dimensional analysis. Yeah, the last one that I want to say today is about this kind of uh, multimedia database. So you have all pictures like this one. Let's say you want to search blue sky. How can you search blue sky? Then you will make these figures into some features, for example, the color histogram. And then if the color blue is dominant, then yeah, you will see the result. So this is the result for blue sky. So everything with blue will appear in the search result. If I put airplane in blue sky, so it will reduce the result. So only the image with airplane. Or if I want to search with blue sky and green meadows, then it will show less result like this one. So you can have your own search function and then if we define this search query, you need to check out what are the meaning of this query so the retrieve system can give you a good image. Okay, okay I will stop here. Any comments or questions?